All right, real excited to test this one out today. We got a brand new Ruger Max 9. So this is Ruger's entry into the micro compact double stack nine millimeter game with higher capacity here. So it's like direct competition to um, the SIG P365, the Taurus TX4, Springfield Hellcat, things like that. Uh, with your standard flush fit magazine here, I believe that holds 10, so you have a 10 plus one capacity. And then with the extended magazine here, uh, you get a 12 plus one capacity. Striker fire, well, unless it's got one of those internal hammer doodads, I'll look it up there. Don't want to get yelled at for that. <clears throat> you got your trigger safety there. And I don't know if they're all like this, but you do have another safety here. Um, this is pretty firm. It takes a quite a bit of pressure to engage this. Plus, it's pretty small. It sticks out there so you can get, you know, it's easy to flip on and off. But I don't think you're going to really have an issue with like catching out on anything, you know, like holstered inside waistband carry or anything like that. So you do have your trigger safety there and then also the optional safety there as well. But like I said, it's small and it takes quite a bit of force to uh, activate it. So these do come optics ready there. Okay. And the sights are a little higher up on it. So I believe that's so you can get like a one third co-witness. So if you have a small enough and low enough red dot there. Uh, you'll still be able to see the iron sights in the bottom half of the uh, red dot if you choose to run an optic on there. So you should have just saw the sights there, but obviously you got that glowing green for the front there. I believe that's a tritium or something like that. It does glow in the dark, so you got nice sights on there. There's the rear notch. It's just blacked out. Um, I actually really like this sight system, like holding it and looking down and whatnot. It, I mean, you can see there. You can pick it up real good. Even against those green targets, you can see it real well. Uh, so hard to do it justice with the camera, especially since it doesn't want to focus. There it goes. Uh, but I actually really like these sights. So uh, this thing ergonomically fits me fantastic. So I got kind of small hands for a guy. Uh, glove size, I wear a medium, but, you know, pretty small hands for a dude. And this thing just fits real good, even with it at the extended mag. Um, it fits pretty good, but I, I do have my pinky hanging off the bottom there. Uh, this to me, I carry a uh, pocket carry a LCP Max, and this feels pretty much like an ice uh, upsized LCP Max. So, really liking that. It's bigger overall, but when I when I hold it, at least the the lower half here, the polymer part, feels pretty much just like the LCP Max. It's just sized up. Um, the slide's a lot different. The sights are a lot different, but also overall, it feels more I don't know sturdy. It, like not as rattly as the LCP Max, but yeah, it's kind of like an upsized LCP Max there. Um, and then with the extended mag on here, <clears throat> if I can get that out. Um, excellent grip. You can get all three fingers on there. And it feels so rock solid. Like it's not bad with the standard flush fit mag, but I do get a heck of a lot better with that extended mag on there. So I'm gonna shoot it with both. I don't think I really have uh, too much of a difference shooting accurately and whatnot between the two because I still get a pretty good grip with that flush fit uh, but it's just so much more comfortable with that extended one on there to be able to get all three fingers on it. So I got some targets set up out there. Uh, I got this. It's actually my rangefinder set. It was 7.9 yards so I'm going to call it 8 yards from where I'm standing right here back behind the bench. So we'll take some preliminary shots on that. Uh, see where it's hitting. Those are just 22 holes, so we should be able to see the difference with a 9mm. If not, I'll put a fresh target on there. Uh, so that's 8 yards out there. My gong I have painted up red because my white paint is not working. That's at 12 yards. And that very back row with the bowling pins and whatnot, that is 15 yards. Generally, I try to get some shots back here uh, at 15 yards and get hits, which I don't think that's going to be a problem. We'll see. Um, but just keep in mind, from back here, I'm shooting something smaller than a headshot at 15 yards like again i have small hands and my hands are wider than those bowling pins there so as far as pistols go to be able to reliably knock those down or semi reliably for 15 yards that's a pretty good uh, shot there uh, but anyways to get started on this paper like i said see where it prints see if i need to adjust the sights or anything like that uh, which they are windage adjustable so i can drift them if i need to and uh, i plan on putting this whole box 100 rounds of winchester through it today these are 115 grain FMJ. All 
All right, you should be able to see there on that target, it was actually grouping pretty nice, especially for my very first shots. And that was with the short flush fit mag. So like I said, I, <laughs> it gives you pretty good grip. I didn't think I'd have any issues shooting it with that short one, but the extended is definitely gonna feel better. But there you can see five shots there, and you can also see it is favoring slightly left. So I don't know if I'm gonna adjust that. I might mess with that later, um, kind of on a time constraint here. So for the time being, I'll leave it as is and I'll just aim slightly right. Um, like I said, the sights are adjustable for windage, so I can fix that no problem. Uh, but let's go out here and hit some of the steel. Enjoyed shooting it much better with the extended mag there. I started out on the gong there for those shots. Uh, you can see they're pretty much dead center. I got rowdy with two of them there, flung them off to the left. And then I started hitting these bowling pins and whatnot right here. And I actually hit every single shot. I shot that close round plate that's knocked over too. I hit every shot. Uh, that one I, I nicked or something. It wiggled but did not go down. Then I hit the next one over there. So I actually hit every one of those shots without missing. So the whole off to the left thing there, it might just be me pulling slightly with these uh because i didn't really aim off to the right or anything but then again if i hit the left edge it should still knock them over but uh it was definitely a lot more comfortable with that extended mag but i mean as evidenced by that target there on the first shots again with the flush fit it's still no problem shooting i can just hang on to it very well it just feels like a completely different gun with the extended one on because you can get all three fingers on it All right, that was pretty amazing. I, uh, like I said, it's 15 yards standing here and I had the camera on the table. So I was standing four or five more yards back. So 20 yards, I knocked all those down without missing. I'll get some of this on camera for you guys, but got every single one of those without missing, except for that last one gave me trouble. I had to send a few shots at that one to finally knock it over and then semi wrap it on the gong there, which would have put it at about 15, 16 yards from where I was standing. And this thing, it's got these little stubby sights on it, which I like for close range. They're not real, you know, like precise pinpoint. You got a short sight radius there, and uh, the sights on it are a little stubbier than some others. I really like that for close range, um, but for especially at 20 yards, trying to knock those bowling pins over, uh, the, the pins were actually uh, about the same width, if not slightly narrower from further back, because I'm standing closer now than what I was just at. Uh, than that front blade so even though that's not the most precise sights on it they're kind of stubby and i like those on a defense pistol i was still knocking those over 20 yards pretty consistently uh, also don't forget many of those shots were with that flush fit mag so yeah it's not too bad even though we got the pinky hanging off there really liking this thing so far recoil on it is what i would describe as snappy because you know it's pretty lightweight so it does give you a decent amount of recoil for a nine millimeter but it's you know it other than being snappy it's pretty manageable i'm not having my grip slip or anything like that um but i got one in the chamber so we'll do uh, 10 plus one here to start just like how you would carry it um i did want to note before firing this i could not get the slide release to work I figured it'd loosen up after I shot a few rounds through it, which it did. So I'm now able to push down that and release the slide uh, with my thumb. So that's currently not an issue now that I fired a few rounds through it. But at the house before firing it, it was it was sticky. It didn't want to go, but it's not an issue now. Um, so I'm just going to stand back behind the camera here, 15 yards to the back row, pace myself and see what I can do.
So yeah, not too bad. I missed a few times there. And I noticed sometimes I pull right, sometimes I pull left, so that's just me, but the gun's plenty accurate. My hand's getting a little sweaty. I've been out here for a few hours in the full sun. It's about 80, so I noticed my, my hand was slipping a little bit. But hey man, this thing shoots great, and it's not that difficult to do so with it either. My left hand was slipping where I had it cupped over top of my right hand. Uh, my right hand was not slipping on the grip of the gun. All right, so she ran 10 plus one, no problem. So this time I'm gonna lead with the extended mag. So we're at 12 plus one, got one in the chamber like you would carry it with the extended mag, make sure there's no issues there. Uh, this time I'm gonna walk up there a little bit. That way I'm shooting at smaller than headshot targets at closer than 15 yards. So see if I can go a little bit faster up there. Yeah, so <laughs> if I slow down, she shoots pretty well. Um, I don't know if I can get this camera right for you guys. Uh, but uh, up close there, trying to run on those teeny tiny targets. My front sight is larger in appearance than those bowling pins from where I was shooting, so that makes kind of a difficult target to shoot at, uh, you know, at a rapid pace because they're so small. I also noticed that it seemed like it was going low. I heard it hit the rail that those things are attached to a few times. So, um, you know, I noticed out here, like I said, um, those were hitting pretty much, other than they were slightly left for me, they were hitting like like a center hold. You know, pistol is usually a six o'clock hold, but those are hitting like a center hold. And then when I got closer uh, up there, it seemed to be, I don't know, maybe I pulled some low, but it seemed to be shooting a little low for me. So I had to start aiming higher to start hitting those at that closer range there. So I think up close you got either a center hold or slightly low from a point of aim. Well, that's a hundred rounds and thirty dollars already. <laughs> so we're done there. I wanted to show you guys the trigger on this real quick. You know, being striker fire, you always have a little bit of like um, play, creep, whatever you want to call it, after the wall you know, because you're pulling that striker back with the trigger. There's your take up on the wall. We'll pull through. So you can see there's, yeah, it's a little more than a Glock or an MP series. I will say it's pretty smooth though. And then the reset, um, it's not like the most fantastic ever but it's i think it's pretty short compared to some others so i'll start letting it out here for the reset right there's the reset and it's right on the wall there's nothing to take back and then it's ready to go again so you know i prefer like uh single action hammer fire because it's a nice crisp trigger pull on most guns uh with no creep or anything like that so i wondered if that uh extra travel here from that striker um, being a little more than the M&Ps and the Glocks I'm used to shooting um, if it was going to cause me any issues out here I mean maybe rapid fire a little but I didn't have any problem being accurate with it as you could see as long as I you know wasn't trying to shoot too fast so, um, it's not really an issue out here I don't even really notice jeez <laughs> blooper I don't even really notice um, shooting targets like I said if I sit here if I sit here and intentionally do it, I'm like, hmm, that has a little more play than a Glock or an M&P. Uh, but when I'm shooting these targets out here, I'm not even noticing it at all, you know. So I, I, I think for the most part, it's going to be a long time. Bang, 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 bang. It's difficult recording videos at... Because that, see that happens if they're close enough, my microphone goes out for a second. So I got to like stop talking and wait or you guys can't hear me. Now I forget what I was saying. I got diarrhea. Anyways, I really like it. Um, I'm okay with the trigger. It's not like a fantastic trigger. It's not a terrible trigger. It's not bad at all. 
doesn't cause me any problems. I'm impressed with the accuracy of this thing. Obviously, it was 100% reliable for us today. Um, I did notice the mags for a 9mm, they're pretty stiff. So it takes a little extra effort to load these. I didn't have any problem loading them, but I did notice the last few rounds. It did take a little bit of force to get them in there compared to some others. So the magazines are a little stiffer. Obviously, it'll wear in a little over time and be a little easier, but they are a little more difficult than load than some other 9mm I've shot, like Glocks and MPs. Um, so there's that. I'm still digging the sights on it. Like I said, um, I mean, this thing is not a target pistol, okay? You know, this is for self-defense. So I'm still digging the kind of chunky sights. That's what I like, as I said earlier, for the, that type of uh, roll. But uh, it does cost you a little bit of precision. But I actually really like these sights for what they're intended for. And again, I mean, taking my time, I'm hitting us almost every time, even back there at 20 yards. Um, so... It's not that much of an issue, but it did slow me down a little bit trying to go at those, you know, tiny targets out there at a rapid pace because the, the front blade was so wide. But again, that's not what this thing is made for. This thing is made for shooting silhouettes, not these little tiny pick them off targets out here. But that'll do it for this one. I really like this pistol a lot. Um, I might start carrying it. I got a bunch of stuff to test out. Just wrapped up the video on that. I got this uh, high power clone here. I got a CZ75 too. I'm plan is I sold my Mustang so I uh, bought a bunch of pistols all these newer ones that everyone wants to see start getting some reviews of the new ones. the idea was sell them off when I'm done buy more, buy more for more reviews but uh, <laughs> I don't know I kind of like them all but uh, yeah this one I'm, I'm really digging it I'd really like to carry this so I might end up having to keep this one alive. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Really like it. You can get yourself any of the products you see me using in my videos, like my safety glasses, uh, laser rangefinder there, target stand, paper targets, steel targets, and more. Links in the description. While you're here, check out some 9mm gel tests on the uh, 9mm gel test playlist. You can find them all quick access that way if you want to check them out and not have to search through a thousand videos. But I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one.